Hello everyone, I'm Z. And today I'm gonna to be teaching you how to make something like this. Ha! The button. Let's get started. So here's what we're gonna be using. A clean plate, which is just an empty shot of the space that you filmed in. A subject, that's yourself or whoever's in the shot. Uh, shut up. <laughs> Dolphin emulator. This is just an emulator for Nintendo games that we can use to get the background footage that we're using for this video. We're going to be using Premiere Pro, Photoshop, and After Effects, or a similar editing software, whatever you're comfortable with. Highly recommend these for this tutorial if you want to follow along, but if you know other ways to do rotoscoping or other things I mentioned in this video, use that software too. Now I know you might be thinking, oh, but Zade, I don't get a clean play. I edit for somebody else. It's okay, don't worry. Cody doesn't give me a clean play either, so I'm gonna show you how to make your own one using Photoshop's AI. No, 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 no. don't worry, I can explain. I. Oh, uh, yeah, just, uh, just go to the next part. So whether you're filming yourself or using a client's footage, you wanna make sure you get a full body shot of the subject, or as close to that as you can, as well as a clean plate or empty background without the subject in it. This, for example, is what perfect footage would look like. You see how it's an empty scene for a few seconds, and then my full body is in shot as I walk in and jump. Oh, oh, oh. And jump. Ah, that's better. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't live in a perfect world, and this is what the original footage I got from Cody looked like. You see how his feet are cut out and there's no empty clean plate shot at all? Yeah, you want to avoid that as much as possible. But if you got footage like mine, I'll still be showing you how to make your own clean plate later. Now that we have our camera footage, we're going to go over to the computer and get some gameplay footage. Uh, over there. Whoa, I'm over here now. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, don't mind this guy. I'm going to open up Dolphin Emulator now and we're going to get the gameplay footage. So we're going to open up Dolphin Emulator, link down below, and we're going to go to Tools, Load Wii System Menu. If you don't see that option, make sure that you're using the latest version and go to Tools, Perform Online System Update, and then select the region that you're in. And then when the update is finished, just load up the Wii System Menu again, it should be visible. Now that we're in the Wii Menu, open up some recording software to record your gameplay. If you don't have any, that's fine. I personally use OBS, which is 100% free, and you can download in the link below. Any alternatives, whether it's Fraps, Bandicam, Camtasia, whatever you want, as long as it records your screen, that's all you need. We're gonna go to the me section and record yourself doing all of the edits or changes that you wanna make. In my case, I did some face edits and some size edits, but you can do as many or as little as you like. And just like that, you've got all the footage that we need and it's time for the harder part, editing. This next section is for making a clean plate from scratch. So if you already have one, skip to this timestamp and it'll go straight to the rotoscoping step. But it is pretty useful in case you come across the same issue as me later. Also, I'm going to have some recorded footage with the clean plate, subject jumping, Wii footage, and the Wii hand assets all in the description if you want to download and edit along with me. Now we're going to open up Premiere and make a new project. Import your footage, gameplay, and clean plate if you made that separately. And we can double click the footage to bring it into the source tab. I'm going to scrub through to find the emptiest section I can featuring the subject in frame, covering as little background as possible. I'm gonna save this frame by pressing the screenshot button right here and bring it into Photoshop beta. It has to be the beta. Now using the lasso tool, I'm gonna draw around my subject as close as possible and delete. Then I'm gonna select around the deleted space and press generate at the bottom. Leave the box empty and press generate image and hopefully you get something like this. It doesn't always end up perfect, but you can generate as many times as you like and maybe add prompts if it's necessary, but generally leaving it alone has the best results. Export this image and just like that you have a clean plate. Pressing I and O on your keyboard you can set an in and out point for what you want to drag into the timeline. I'm going to press I right here as I'm falling from the jump and then I'm going to press O whenever I want it to end. Then just click and drag the video into the timeline and it'll be ready. Similarly with the gameplay footage I'm going to press I where I want it to start and O where I want it to finish. Just select the section that you're going to use for the video and drag it back in as similar. Finally add your clean plate as a third layer and we're ready to go into After Effects. With all the layers selected in your timeline, right click and press replace with After Effects composition. This should open up After Effects and ask you to make a new file. Just name it whatever you want. First, we're going to rotoscope the subject. Now double click the layer of you jumping and press Alt W or this rotoscope tool up here and we're going to click and drag to select the areas that we want to keep in the scene. Make sure after you've done the first
first selection to press best down here. You need to change the quality to best. You will regret it otherwise, please. Now for any errors you don't want selected, hold the alt key and drag to remove it. Repeat this process, clicking to select what you want and alt clicking to remove what you don't want until you have a good set of your subjects selected. Pressing the page down key, we can move forward one frame and see how After Effects automatically tries to copy it. Keep moving forward using the page down key, but for any frames that mess up, simply adjust as you were. Click and drag to fix things, alt drag to remove things. If things are looking good, you can hold shift and page down and you can skip 10 frames at a time. But if you notice any problems when you skip frames, don't worry, just go back, fix that frame and it should adjust accordingly. There's no fast way to do this. Usually the longer it takes, the more accurate you are, but that's completely up to you. When you're done, press this freeze button at the bottom of the screen and let After Effects save all your work. Don't forget to consistently save, by the way. Back in the main timeline, we can check how good the rotoscoping did. If you notice any problems or want to make any changes, go back in the layer by double clicking, press unfreeze and fix the frames necessary. When you're happy with the rotoscope, we're going to freeze the layer again and go back into the timeline. Pressing V returns to the default selection tool, by the way. We're going to duplicate this layer by selecting it and pressing Control D and pre-comp this new layer by pressing Control Shift C. Name it Freeze Frame and select Move All Attributes into New Composition. A pre-comp just groups the selected layers, in our case one, into a new composition. With the Freeze Frame composition selected, move the playhead to the point of your subject standing as naturally as possible and right-click and press Freeze Frame. This is the layer we're going to use for the Me customization. Speaking of which, let's do that. We're going to move the Freeze Frame layer to the start of our timeline, just over our Me footage. By moving the playhead to the beginning of the timeline and pressing left bracket or the open bracket button. This moves the start point of any layer selected to the playhead. Similarly, moving the right or close bracket does the opposite, moving the end point of the layer to the playhead. We also want to move it down so it's just above our Me footage layer for organization's sake. So the Wii footage we got from Dolphin Emulator is a different aspect ratio, so we'll have to resize this video. You can do this by clicking and dragging these squares, making sure the right layer is selected until it fits the screen. If you want it to scale evenly, just hold the shift key while you drag it. I'm cool with the stretch specifically for the Me layer because it's a weird aspect ratio already. Now move the freeze frame layer to line up roughly with the Me character, scaling like before if needed. To remove the Me character from behind your subject, we're going to use the Photoshop beta again. Solo the Me layer by pressing this button and we're going to screenshot a frame without the Wii hand covering the Me, like this one. To save the frame, go to Composition, Save Frame As, and File. Select where you want to save it and press Render. Now right click the Photoshop file you just created and open with Adobe Photoshop 2024, which is just the Photoshop beta. Similar to our last clean plate, we're going to select around the Me area with this lasso tool and press delete. If it asks about fill options, just change it to white and press enter. Now select around this area again with the lasso tool and press generate and leave the text box empty. Hopefully you should get something like this. Remember you can generate again if needed. Press Control S to save and close Photoshop. Back in After Effects, we're going to import this Photoshop file and press merge layer styles into footage. Unsolo the footage and wow, now we've got a clean background. Yay! But now there's nothing moving the timeline. That's because we have to mask around this clean plate to only cover the me section. Press G on your keyboard or select the pen tool and with the me clean plate selected, draw around where the me was, like this. You're basically selecting what you want to cover the layer below. In our case, we want to cover up the me. I'm also going to freeze frame the clean background composition so it lasts as long as I need. Scrubbing through the video, if you see any problems with the hand disappearing or cutting over the mask, you can press M on your keyboard and with the me layer selected, you can change the mask that you made just by clicking and dragging all these points. When it's good, we're going to move to the face effect that you selected. With the freeze frame subject layer selected, move the playhead to where you change the face option and press Control shift d to split this layer. With this new split layer selected, we're going to add the liquify effect under Effect, Distort, Liquify. Also, I highly recommend this free plugin called FX Console. It basically lets me press a hotkey, control space on my keyboard, and I can search for any effect I want to add to any selected layer. Anyways, with the Liquify tool selected, press the first option, and we're going to mold the subject's face to match the me face selected. You can zoom into the preview using the scroll wheel and move the screen with the middle mouse key. Holding control while using the scroll wheel, you can increase or decrease the brush size selected. Click and drag like a paintbrush to try and mold or match the face that you selected and you should be good. Now scroll to where you selected the default face again and split the layer like before and just delete the liquify tool. Now as you can see it goes from default to edited to default again. If you did three face options you can just control shift D and split as many times as you want and affect the liquify tool as many times as you like. Now for the sizing section we're going to use a thing called null objects. This is just an invisible or imaginary object generally used for controlling or referencing in After Effects. In our case controlling. Create a null object by right clicking new and null object. Pressing Control Alt Home will center the anchor point of the null and we're going to 
move it to around where the subject's legs are. Drag this little cog wheel from the freeze frame layer to the null layer to parent it to the null. This means that when we move the null, the subject layer also moves because it's parented to that null. Move the playhead to just before we select the size section in the me footage and press P on the null layer. Then holding shift, we're gonna press S on the same layer. Holding shift while pressing either just makes both visible at the same time. We're gonna press this little stopwatch next to both position and scale to set a starting keyframe. Moving forward to when it's fully transitioned into the size section, press these two diamonds to create another keyframe. We're gonna move the null into place like this by holding shift and dragging the null up. We're holding shift because it locks the axis into position, meaning it'll go straight and it won't wiggle or move diagonally in the transition. Then we're gonna scale down the null to fit the screen. You can scale with these corners on the null, but because of how small and finicky it can be, I generally use the scale here. Keep in mind, whatever scale we set here will be referenced as the default me size that will scale up or down with. So if you scale up, you wanna make sure there's enough headroom to scale up, and vice versa, if you're scaling down, you don't want them to be too small that it looks weird. Now, if we play back this section, it scales along the animation. Wow, but it looks really slow and ugly. We can fix this by first changing the timing. Dragging the keyframes closer together increases the speed it takes to get from point A to point B. These keyframes define where the selected layer is gonna go and in what time. If I drag them apart, it's gonna take a long time to get from here to here. If they're close, it does the opposite. We can also smooth out the animation by selecting the keyframes and pressing F9. This creates an ease. With these keyframes still selected, press the graph editor button. If your graph editor looks a little different to mine, that's okay. Just right click the empty space and make sure edit speed graph is selected. You can zoom in and out of this view by holding alt while scrolling your mouse wheel. To smooth out the animation, you want to make a shape similar to mine here. By dragging and selecting these endpoints, you can pull them in or out to change how the animation looks. Already, it looks a lot smoother, but I also think it's too fast. So you can adjust the timing as much as you want, moving the keyframes left, right, however you like until it looks perfect. We're gonna animate the sizing of the subject changing with the Wii scrolling the same way. Move the playhead to where the Wii control is selected, remember page up and down to move frame by frame, and set a new scale keyframe with this diamond. Move forward one frame to when it's selected and scale it up slightly bigger because of the sudden movement that happens when the size increases. Now move the playhead to the point where it stops moving. In my case, I jitter the movement a little, which is okay. It just means a little extra work. At any point the hand stops moving, set a keyframe, decreasing the scale accordingly, just like this. Now I'm gonna select all these keyframes I just made and hold control, then click on the frames again. This removes the ease that we added earlier to just the selected frames. We don't want these frames to ease just for the realistic movement of the Wii control. When it's done, you should have something like this. You can always delete frames, readjust frames, and change everything. So don't worry if it's not perfect the first time you do it. It rarely is. Also, if you only want to preview a specific selection, press B where you want to start and N where you want to end. Now, After Effects will only play within this area. If that doesn't work and it plays around it, make sure your preview settings look something like this. And just like that, our me section is complete. The last thing we got to do is the hand drop animation. I'm first going to clean up the timeline a little bit by making the me selection layers all end here before the next selection starts. Select all the me related layers while holding control like so. Press alt and close bracket to trim the end of the layer to the playhead. Go to the point where your subject is dropping and we're going to duplicate this layer with control D. pre comp the selected layer with control shift C and make sure to bring all attributes. Finally, freeze frame the layer and this is going to be what the Wii hand controls. Rename the top layer for organization to jump frozen and link our subject footage to the frozen footage properties like we did with the null. Now they should both move together. Hide the moving subject layer after making sure they're properly linked and we're going to shrink or increase the size of our jump frozen layer according to the changes you made in the me selection. In my case, I'm going to decrease the subject size to match. Move the subject into position. In my case, I'm going to hide the clipping of his feet and make sure he lands more naturally. To do the Wii hand movement, we're going to create another null object and call it hand control. Center the null's anchor point and place it around the subject's head or wherever you plan to put the Wii hand that's moving the subject. And then we're going to link the frozen layer to the hand control null. Although we could manually animate the movement of Cody onto the screen, we want to make it look a little bit more realistic like a handheld controller. So we're going to use Motion Sketch, just a tool in After Effects that tracks the position of your mouse movement and creates keyframes accordingly. Go into Window at the top left and press Motion Sketch to bring the tab into view. Keeping these default settings, check the background options so that we can see where we're moving at the same time. Depending on the length of your overall timeline, you may want to extend it so you have more space or time to work with this animation. Go into Composition at the top left, Composition Settings, and then changing this duration value. I'm going to set it to 10 seconds, which is more than enough, but I can always cut it down later. And then extend the Null, Jump Frozen layer, and Clean Plate layers accordingly. Press B on your keyboard at the beginning of the clip to set the start of the preview area. And then press N on your keyboard where you want the motion sketch area to finish.
finish recording. For example, I'll press N here so it's no more than eight seconds. It's better to have more area and stop early than it is to be cut off midway through your animation. Select the hand control null and open up the position controls and set a new keyframe. This is just so we know the final position that we want the subject to be in. Make sure this keyframe is after the in out recording area so that it doesn't get deleted or overwritten. Press I on your hand control layer to go to the beginning and press start caption in the motion sketch tab here. Nothing's gonna happen at first, but as soon as you click and start dragging, you'll see After Effects starts making keyframes following your mouse movement. When it reaches your out point or you let go, it'll automatically stop recording. Press Control Z to undo this animation and we can make the movement we want, making sure to finish above the original position or as close as you can. You can go left to right, drop in from the sky, do a circle, loop-de-loops, whatever you want. Undo and try again as many times until you get the animation that you're looking for. When you're happy with the animation, go to the last recorded frame, hold shift and page down and you can move forward 10 frames instead of one frame. Now we're going to move that original keyframe we made with the final position and paste it here. On just these last two frames, press F9 to create an ease and we're going to go into the graph editor. We want to pull all of these endpoints to the right because it simulates falling. The curves dictate the speed and so as you can see it starts really slow then gets faster and faster just like gravity. Obviously it's going to look a little weird here because he's not moving yet. So we're going to unmute the subject layer below and move the start to just before the fall lands like this by pressing the open bracket or just dragging forward in the timeline. Where the subject video starts, we don't want to have overlap of the two layers, so we're going to end the frozen footage with alt close bracket. And now it's done. Remember, you can always re-record the motion sketch and adjust these final frames to your liking. It doesn't matter. At this point, since everything's linked together, if you change one thing, it should carry on everything else. Now I'm going to add the me hand assets, which are linked to the description. Go to the end point of your jump frozen layer and drag the hands above this layer with the open hand on top. Then make sure both hands are the same size and in the same position by rescaling or rotating as necessary. You can use the rotate tool by pressing W on your keyboard and then press V to return back to the default selection. If you notice, I'm hiding and unhiding layers so I can see whether it's lining up or matching. That's using a hotkey. You can add this hotkey and many others by going to edit, keyboard shortcuts, and then type in whatever hotkey you want to change. The one I'm talking about is called toggle video switch for selected layers. You then click the area you want to set a hotkey for and press the value. Now when I press 3 on my keyboard, it changes the visibility for whatever layer is selected. Link the open hand layer to the close hand layer like so. Then hide the open hand layer and move the close hand layer into place on the subject. In my case, just on his head works. Link the close hand layer to the hand control null and it looks like it's being controlled by the hand. To simulate the hand letting go, at the point before the subject is dropped, end the hand close layer and start the hand open layer by unmuting it here. But now, because of the link together, the hand is falling with Cody, which we don't want. Simply unlink the open hand from the close hand by setting this parent drop down to none and now it drops on its own. You can animate the hand going off screen however you want. You can use the motion sketch like I showed before, or you can just create two position keyframes and move them out like this. And just like that, we're finished. Go to the out point of your subject layer with O and set the end of the video with N. Then go to the beginning and press B to start. Now if you press Control Shift X, it trims the composition length to the start and end points that you selected. Play back the video and adjust anything that you want to change. You could also add motion blur if you wanted just by selecting all these boxes. Finally, I like to render the video out in After Effects before I bring it back into Premiere. Press Control M to export and change the settings to your liking, then choose an output folder. Hit render and back in Premiere, import the footage and holding Alt, we can drag and select over the video to replace it. And there you go. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you made something cool. If you did, send it to me. Uh, my DMs are open on Instagram and Twitter or my Discord is linked in the description below. This is my first detail tutorial, so I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know. If you didn't, let me know why. Um, and if you have any questions or there are any problems while you're following it, I forget anything, just comment them below or DM me. I should reply pretty quickly because I have nothing to do in life. So yeah, thank you, bye.